friends. This week I have been working on a cushion. This is the cushion. It was made from some fabric that came in the July So Haley Jane box. Uh, I just loved the colours of the fabric, really cute design and I thought it would make a great cushion. So I gave it a go and here it is. The reverse of the cushion is just made from some fabric that I had in my stash left over from a top that I made quite a few years ago so it was great to get that used up. In this video I'm going to explain to you the process of making the cushion. If you are new to quilting then paper piecing which is the technique I use to put this together is a really quick easy technique to pick up so it's a great place to start. Anyway keep watching to find out how to do it. I start out by planning each individual panel. My cushion pad is 35 centimetres, that's approximately 14 inches. So I decided that I wanted four repeats going across the cushion. So each one would need to be three and a half inches for that then add up to my 14 inches across. I decided to divide it up with little narrow strips of half an inch and then the wider um, strips are two inches on one side, four inches on the other, alternating to create that zigzag effect. And then at the top of the bottom, I've split one of those wider ones so that that means that when I rotate the piece, I then carry on that zigzag. I've used four different fabric types. Obviously you could use less by just alternating between two, but that's just how I decided to do it. From my rough plan, I then drew it out neatly and I added on a half inch seam around the outside, which is really important because obviously you need to join the sections together once you've pieced the individual panels. I labelled up each section to help make sure that I used the right fabric in the right place and I made four copies of the template. Each one is labelled up so you've got A, B, C, D. Again, I'm doing that to make sure that I don't muddle it up so that when I join them together, everything comes together neatly to form my zigzag. The next step was to then prepare the fabric cutting it out into pieces a bit bigger than the piece that I was going to need for each section. Okay, with the prep done, I was ready to start piecing. The first bit of fabric needed to be positioned at the bottom of the template. It was the wrong side of the fabric against the wrong side of the template. And then I needed to get my second fabric, which is the one that's going to be the narrow strip. That needed to be positioned right sides together against the right side of the first fabric. Now it's really important to get the position of your second piece of fabric correct. So I'm showing you here over my light pad so that you can see how I've positioned it. So what you want there to be is a narrow seam showing above that line that you're going to be stitching on. You want a roughly a quarter of an inch above the line. I've just used one pin to keep it in place. You can pin it more if you want to, but it obviously it makes it quicker to do if you only use a few pins. So the next stage I haven't shown you, that's just me stitching along the first line of my template. The next thing that you need to do is fold the template out the way so that you can get access to the fabric on the back. You then need to get something where you can neatly cut along that seam because you want to get rid of your excess fabric. You only want a quarter of an inch seam can then open out your template and then this is ready for you to then press that seam to get it all nice and neat. Okay, so your first two pieces are joined. You can see now I've done the pressing and I'm ready to add on the next piece, the A3 piece. So here's my fabric. Now here, the issue I've got 
is that the print is directional. So it's going to be really important for me to make sure that I've got the fabric the way up that I want it before I stitch it together. So I'm going to position my toucans upside down and then I'm lining it up using that line as a guide. I want to position it again so that I'm going to get my quarter inch seam. Again, putting in just one pin just to hold it roughly in place. Now one thing that I always do is to just kind of flatten it out afterwards to check that my piece is positioned in an okay position before I stitch it. I want to make sure that that piece when it's folded out is going to cover the whole section of the template. So that's what I'm doing here. Okay, so now I've stitched on that piece. I again stitching along that line that's marked on my template. So then I need to turn it onto its back, folding the template out the way, get my tool for cutting along, and then I'm going to trim away the excess, leaving only my little quarter inch seam. That's all there is to it really, with each piece. You just work your way up the template, going through this process, positioning the fabrics right side together, allowing a quarter inch st seam, stitching, trimming, pressing and so on. I think the most difficult thing is that you need to get the position of the fabric right where, before you stitch. You need to be able to kind of envisage how that's going to be positioned when you flip it upwards. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward and that step just comes with practice. As I said, I always use a pin, fold it up into position so that I can see. Um, as I've allowed a half inch all the way round, if it doesn't quite reach the edge all the way up to that half inch, I know that it's fine because really I only need a quarter inch seam going all the way round. You can see how some of the fabric extends to the sides of the template. I'm not going to worry about that at this stage. That will be trimmed away once the whole strip has been joined together. Okay, so while you watch me gradually putting together the first section, I'm just going to talk a bit about the equipment that I've used. Obviously, there's my sewing machine. I'm not going to talk about that. What I mean by the equipment is all the additional stuff. So in actual fact, I haven't used a lot of different bits of equipment here. I have simply used a quilting ruler, a cutting mat and a rotary cutter. The key thing is that you want to be able to cut everything really accurately. And those are the bits of equipment that you need to do that. Okay, so now all the bits in the first section have been joined together, so I'm just going to cut round the outside, just tidying up my first panel. There you go, one section is complete, and then it's just a process of doing the same thing for the next three sections, and you've got your four panels that you're going to need to join together to make one complete square. Okay, not long to go now, just need to do the quilting. So here we go, I've got my square that is going to be my cushion. You can see that I've got a layer of wadding and then the batting behind it. And I'm going to start quilting. I decided to keep the quilting quite simple. I didn't want lines of stitching going over my design. So I focused on just quilting the green sections, just following the zigzag shape. Now I've finished the quilting, hopefully you can just about make out the lines going through the green section. At the back of the cushion I've cut out two pieces of fabric, they are 14 and a half by 10 inches. I've then sewn a narrow hem by folding and pressing twice um, and stitched that. And then I just position those over the back and then it's just a case of stitching round the outside. 
I like to just use an envelope close rather than a zip. It's really quick to do. You don't have to pay for a zip um, and it does the job. So you don't need to do anything else. Here's the finished cushion. So it didn't take too long all in all. I'm pretty happy with the result. Anyway, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Bye.